everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper, and I want you to imagine you're on a plane. There's some turbulence, nothing too crazy, but when you land, five years have passed. That's the premise of the new NBC drama Manifest, which follows the survivors of a plane that went missing and then suddenly reappears five years later, giving the survivors a second chance at life. Today, I'll be joined by two of the show's stars, Melissa, Melissa Roxburgh and J.R. Ramirez, but first, a clip from Manifest. Missing for five and a half years. You haven't aged a day. This is impossible. I think we've taken impossible off the table. Manifest premieres September 24th on NBC. Everyone, please help me listen. <laughs> Melissa Roxborough <laughs> and J.R. Ramirez. Damn it. We tried, we tried. I got in my head. <laughs> Melissa nice. Roxborough. Yes. That's a good name. It's yeah. tricky. That Edinburgh. last part's like a little Edinburgh. Tricky. Yeah. I wanted, I wanted to say it right because I hate when people mess you up. You know, there's been a bunch of different ways. There's Roxburgh, Roxborough, Roxborough. Just make I get it. RJ all the time. Add your, add your own little thing. We're going to set the tone here. But guys, the day has finally arrived. Manifest debuts tonight. What does that finally feel like? Because I know you guys have been talking about it and filming it for a long time. Yeah, I mean, I'm just really happy that everyone gets to see all the hard work that we've put into the episodes. Um, I know it feels like we've been kind of working in a bubble, so that bubble yeah. gets to pop now, and everyone gets to experience this with us. Yeah, I can't wait to, to put it out there finally. So take us through the premise of Manifest. All right, Manifest is about a plane, Flight 828, that left Jamaica in 2013 with 191 passengers on it. And uh, after a few hours of terrible turbulence, uh, they land in New York City and are told that the last five and a half years of their life, they've been presumed dead and missing, and not a single one of the passengers aged a day. So, you know, they're left picking up, you know. Yeah, we come back of, to some complicated situations. It's a little complex. It's five and a half years, you know. So. On top of the fact that some of us start to experience things that are a little odd and uh, that kind of adds to the mystery of what happened to us and why we're back. And it all starts with um, characters being asked to take a later flight. You know, sometimes when you're in the airport, they're like, this flight's full. We need five volunteers. That part triggered me the most. I was like, oh, my gosh. Because it happens all the time, yes. right? Like, even the other day, one of our co-stars was coming back from Toronto, and <laughs> they offered her a voucher. She's like, no. It was like 400 bucks. She's like, I'm not taking it. Yeah. No, I'm not going to have In the show, yeah, you, your character takes the later yeah. flight, and then she ends up on this one that disappears for five years. Yeah. She didn't want to marry me. That's why. Right. Know? So it was... So take us through who your characters are. Um, I play Michaela Stone. So we, off the top, we get to meet the Stone family, uh, Grandma, Grandpa, uh, Ben, his wife, Grace, their twins, uh, me, all by my lonesome. <laughs> um, and the three of us, me, Ben, and his son, Cal, get on the flight. Um, so I'm a bit of a wild card character. She's been through a lot of tragedy. Um, she's kind of grown up in her older brother's shadow, and he's very successful, very A-type personality, and which leaves her to kind of, you know, carve her own path, and it hasn't been easy. Um, she accidentally killed her best friend in a drunk driving accident. So she's a bit of a mess getting onto that plane, and when she lands, even more so, Jared's moved on, you know, as, as you would after five and a half years. He married her best friend. Um, so we, we meet Michaela at a very fragile state in her life and get to watch her rebuild herself. Right. And she's a police officer. And so yeah. this new sort of ability she has after the flight actually plays into her career very well. Yeah. So she comes back and wants to, you know, get back to work and um, all of a sudden starts to hear things and listens, <laughs> which we don't know why, but she does. <laughs> she listens to these voices and it actually helps her solve a case. And so she trusts it. Um, over the course of the series, we get to kind of see the good and the bad of these, um, these callings. So yeah, yeah. stay tuned. Mm -hmm. And what is he thinking when she comes back? Uh, well, those voices put my character in jeopardy quite a bit. So um, I play Detective Jared Vasquez. He's a hardworking uh, cop who loves what he does, has a big heart. And uh, the love of his life was on that flight. It was the first true love. They'd known each other half their lives. And uh, he proposed to her. And she left him waiting for an answer that he never got. Uh, and then he spent a few years mourning her loss, you know, and sharing that with one person who could really understand the pain that he was going through, her best friend, um, as, you know, as you do on television. And, 
It's got to uh, be the best friend, right? Yeah, yeah, had to be the best friend. Um, and then, you know, he spent three years happily. He got married to her, and he's been happily married for three years and devoted to her. And He says happily every time. I like, have to he say really it. I, now I know it bugs her. So it I have to say it. <laughs> yeah. He told me last week, she's like, you weren't, why are you so happy? I was like, he, kept he was like, happy, you know? I, he, I'm so happy in my new <laughs> marriage. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Now I know it bugs her, so I have to say it. Um, but, no, yeah, he was. He, I mean, obviously, who's going to expect something like this to happen? Yeah. You know, for someone to reappear like that, um, it's unexplainable. Um, and when she comes back, not only is she back, but he has to work with her every single day. So now he's in, you know, trying to, to balance the fact of being a, a devoted husband and the love of his life is now back and he has to see her every day at work. So it's a little complex. It's this interesting mix of like lost and like this is us mm -hmm. and then SVU almost like it's yeah, like I was watching the show I was like I'm getting everything that yeah, you kind of want from like a procedural aspect yeah prime team yeah. which I loved and was really yeah. fun so your two characters obviously were on a journey with them but you know there were 190 other people on this flight so are we going to see kind of different stories throughout the show yeah, all of the passengers end up being interconnected um and we get to meet uh, one of them in the next episode um, and delve into his life a little bit and then uh, over the course of the season we do get to see a lot of the other passengers um there's 191 storylines so obviously we can't touch <laughs> a lot of stories right to away, tell so. but it gives us somewhere to go and it gives us a lot of you know material to dive into yeah. for future seasons yeah. and how much do you guys know because i really want to know how this ends but i did read that producer jeff flake like has an idea oh he also created it yes has an idea of where this is going but do you guys have that same idea it, he he hasn't told any of us he he knows how it ends um i have been joking that i try and catch him when he's like really tired because that's when he'll spill the beans the most he's so nosy <laughs> every time we're together she's always like so jeff and she's just asking questions there was I'd... one day though that he was really really he tired and he started talking and i was like oh yeah, Here but we now go. he's edge, you know, now good luck. And, he's but now like he's caught on, so he'll, you know, he's a yeah. steel vault now. This is the first show that I, I've been a part of that I actually don't want to know. Really? It's so crazy, like anything can happen. I think the element of surprise is something that's really magical in this show that every time we read a script, at least for myself, there's a moment where it just completely catches me off guard because I didn't, just didn't see it coming at all, um, which I think the audience is going to totally, you know, dig and, and love. Uh, but yeah, I don't want to know what happens. I have no idea what if my cousin's like, it was aliens. I was like, dude, I don't know what it was. Like, it could be anything, you know? Yeah, we get to go along for the ride and yeah. uh, be surprised as we get to read each episode. So it's kind of fun. That's the thing. There's the science part of it, but then there's also a spiritual part of it. And you see that religion might play a piece of it. You're not sure. Any I, theories around that? I mean... I uh, I can speak for my character. I actually don't know. This show could go so many different ways. Um, but what Jeff has done a good job of creating is Michaela is kind of the spiritual, um, you know, her mom was very religious, and so she's falling back into that after going away from religion for a long time. So she's kind of wondering if maybe it is God. And then we have Ben, who's like, nope, it's got to be fact and scientific. Like, there's, uh, there's a reason, a uh, concrete reason that this has all happened. And so we get to see the push and pull of both like opposite ends of the spectrum coming together um and then yeah there's 191 people 191 different theories possibly yeah so. and it's called manifest which at first i assumed was like oh like a plain manifest but then manifest also means like making things yeah. creating it's things creating in a spiritual stuff. sense so there's like a little it's like designed to confuse yeah. you and i don't want to wait to the end to know i want to know now <laughs> <laughs> we'll get along just great. Then, do, you, you know? do you read the end of a book and just be like, oh, what happened? Sometimes I'll yeah. read like the last two lines just to <laughs> make sure it's going to be. Yeah. yeah. But no, that's it's such a fun journey you guys are on. Yeah. Like, absolutely. absolutely. And what it, what is it like on set when you're re doing those table reads? Are a lot of people shocked by? You know, we we've been so busy and go, go, go that we haven't actually had time to do table reads for each episode. We did one for the first uh, episode that we came back to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we all kind of like meet meet by the meet by the lockers is what I wanted to say, but um, and discuss the next episode. So we've had fun going over that. Yeah, it's really nice to be able to go to work uh, just in anything you, anyone ever does. To be able to say you're, you're happy to go to work with the people you work with and, you, you know, everyone's so collaborative and uh, so passionate about telling the story, you know, that it really rubs off on hopefully, you know, what you guys see on screen. So it's a great, it's a great group. And I think people are so inherently fascinated by air travel and the mysteries around it like Amelia Earhart or even the flight MH370, the Malaysian Airlines flight. I read that this is loosely kind of inspired by that 
because that disappearance was so quick and sudden and everybody's still fascinated by I it. I mean, it's funny because Jeff wrote the the script before that happened and uh, he, he, he had trouble like selling the pilot. And then as soon as that happened, everyone's like, wait, well, yeah. <laughs> hold it's on. Time. That's actually very interesting. Perfect timing. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, that caught my attention because it's like you do. You wonder like what would happen after all, after all this time if the plane was found or if the people came back, yeah. Yeah. what would their lives be like? So when it comes to time travel, have you guys thought about what you would do if you woke up and it was like five years in the future? Like, what do you think you would do? Yeah, I feel like people ask us all the time, like, what would like what would Jared do in this circumstance? As like Jr. do, I mean, um, and Jared's circumstance. I have, I, I literally have. It's so unimaginable that I would. I keep saying I'd run away, but she's like, "Hello." <laughs> I don't know what I would do to be honest with you. Um, it's just crazy. Like it just, yeah. I actually have no idea. Time travel stuff really it's, trips me out. It trips like me out, yeah, yeah. I mean, imagine coming back and, like, you, you left in 2013 and all of a sudden there's, like, self-driving cars and, like, all this new technology and you're Crazy. like, well, what? And Trump, and you're like, what? You said with the one word that I'm just like, I've learned not to talk. We've learned not to say anything about politics, but that's a, it's the funniest memes that we've gotten so far before shows even aired have just been like, can you imagine you come back and, you know, you were uh, in the situation that you're at? I'll just leave it at that, so, yeah. I said it for you. It's yeah, you go. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you guys obviously have some really important, powerful people, too, behind this. Uh, Robert Zemeckis directed Back in the Future, which I love that he's tied to this project as yeah. well. So he has a thing for, like, time travel and exploring those different... Yeah, that's his niche, for sure. So what has it been like just being a part of a project that has such, like, legitimate force and power behind it? And obviously, it's a big network show, and I know that's... Yeah. A big move for any actor's career. I mean, I felt really well taken care of on the pilot. We have da we had David Frankel directing it, yeah. who's another awesome power behind us. Yeah. Um, Jeff, who's an amazing writer, and then Jack Rapke yeah, and yeah. Jackie, and and yeah. you know, like it, it just felt like such a safe space to walk into because it, these people have been doing it for so long, and they've had so many successful shows and movies come out that you're like, how could this go wrong? Yeah, um, it's, it's also crazy how, how well taken care of we feel. Like honestly, like all the time, we're constantly getting. Because when, when you're in the middle of this machine, you kind of see they get lost in the midst of it all, you know, and um, they are constantly just reminding us because they're seeing how things are playing out, just reminding us of the job that they're getting, that they're seeing and how happy they are. And, you know, to have the network give us like one of the best time slots. It's just it's surreal. You know, we're coming after a little show called The Voice. <laughs> it's just it's a it's a blessing. It's crazy. Yeah. What's the biggest thing you've learned so far being a part of this project <clears throat> or something that's made you like oh, really wow. amp up your work or how you approach things? Um, I mean, this is the the first like big thing that I've gotten to be a part of, and so I just get to you know constantly go to work and what you've been doing this a long time. Josh Dallas has been doing this a long time. I get to you know see these people who have been so successful but are so humble, and I just have a lot of respect for my co-stars because it's, you know it's really taught me that coming to work is just it should be fun and you yeah. should pour your heart and soul into it, and that's that. I'd say the same thing. I mean, I've been in circumstances where I feel like a lot of people have in jobs where they're not extremely happy with the people they have to work with or there's just a lot of ego and drama for no reason and the simple fact that, uh, you know, this is her first time, I believe, leading a show and she, this one shows up to work. I don't get used to the compliments, but uh, she shows up to work prepared and is egoless and ready to work and invest he, in the story. And too, so that yeah, helps. <laughs> it's a shitload of starburst. I don't know if we're allowed to say that, but uh, you can. Okay, you perfect. Can. You can say um, a shitload of starburst. Perfect, perfect. She's a shitload of starburst. <laughs> Anytime Love there's candy, I was like, no, don't even oh, think about. Good. There no, was but some yeah. Back there, oh, I ate so many. And they're Our, only the pink and red ones. They're they're, they're <laughs> weird flavors, right? The they're best good flavors. flavors. I mean, the best. You guys yeah. picked out. You guys did that on purpose. Like you guys feel welcome. Nobody should have to eat a yellow. <laughs> it's not fair. Yeah. So what is the mood like on set? Because it's so intense on the show. I mean, yes. So there's like the first couple episodes, we were all like crying. Like there's a lot of scenes that are emotional, and so I got to a point where I'm like, I gotta, like I gotta laugh somehow. So that never happened I with mean, me. I mean, Josh is the easiest person to prank in the world. <laughs> so I've kind of taken it upon myself to traumatize him on a weekly basis. Um, he hates cockroaches, so I filled his room with cockroaches one time. Real ones? No, 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 no. 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 They were fake okay. ones. Fake ones. But I, I hid them in like them. really good spots, and it took him a long time. Yeah. But when he found them, oh my god! Oh, that, that was the is best not day cool. ever. I was so happy. Yeah. So yeah, no, we all get along really, really well. Um, there's there's a lot of good energy on set, and I think you know. I'm surprised we. Oh, I'm just, I'll speak for myself. I'm surprised I still have a job because there will be at least once a day. I work with this one a lot. At least once a day, we'll get in like a delirious state where I just can't stop laughing. 
and we get in this laughter and uncontrollable laughter and we're like it takes me a good couple minutes to get it together so i'm just like i'm not gonna have a job tomorrow morning it's fantastic you know but it kind of it bleeds into the crew as well yes. like we have awesome um amazing camera crew. department we have an awesome yeah. hair and makeup department like every day you show up and you're just kind of like hugged emotionally yeah and loved and supported and it, yeah it's it, great it, yeah and what is it like getting to take on different roles? You know, I, I watched you in Ghost for a couple of seasons and, uh, or not Ghost, sorry, Power. I'm yeah, thinking yeah, Ghost, yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah. I've seen you in you're Power in for line. years and you're playing this kind of like hard, tough guy. Now you're on the other side, you're the good guy. Yeah. So what's that like just getting to play both sides of a coin? Fantastic. I mean, as an, as an actor and an artist, I think the best thing you can, you know, only wish for is the fact to be able to be a chameleon and take on different aspects of, of human life and, uh, I've been blessed enough to, you know, be working nonstop in New York City, even though I keep pushing against it and wanting to go back to the West. It's been really, really good to me, you know. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's been a, a, an amazing journey, man. I'm so proud. I'm so proud of everything we've done, especially this show coming out. It's, 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 it's special, for sure. What is it like filming in New York City? I would imagine the energy is just like... Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm from Canada, Vancouver, um, but I, I love New York, and we were kind of waiting to hear if we would get to shoot here, and when we did, um, I, I'm really happy. Like, it's it's such a dynamic, exuberant city that you just, you feel alive. Yeah, and, so. and you really can't do it, any, you can't <laughs> do it anywhere else. You know, New York, I feel like New York is a part of every single uh, show that I've worked at out here. I feel like the city is part of that, it's, it's part of that show. It speaks so much with the layers and these warehouses and like the grit and like stuff you just can't reproduce in Los Angeles. You know, it really does. New York City is has an element you can't find anywhere else. Like you said, you can feel it when you walk. For sure, it too. absolutely, yeah, it makes yeah. it come alive. Yeah. Well, I know that our audience has a couple of questions for you. So, who do we have first? Right there. Hey guys. Hi. Hey, how are you? Good luck tonight. I will be watching. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. yeah. Thanks so much. So my question is, you mentioned you don't know the full arc of the story. And as actors, is it is it easier for you to act out a scene knowing that you don't know what eventually happens versus if you did, it might influence kind of how you uh, how you take on a scene? I mean, I want to say no because I want to know the end. <laughs> but that's that's the reason our showrunners haven't told us anything because they're like, we don't want you to change what you're doing or how you're doing it. Um, I think that's bull crap. But <laughs> you know what? It makes sense. It makes sense for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because you can set your mind to something and then, you know, you can show up to work and it's completely different and that yeah. can throw you off a little bit. So the fact of really being surprised as anybody else would reading it and knowing you got like a day to put it together and, and produce it, it's yeah. like... It's just raw. It's so much more mm -hmm. visceral, you know, in my opinion. Cool. Yeah. So you really just get it script by script. You don't get anything yeah, ahead no, no, of time. No, 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 script by script. Wow. Unless wow. you're Melissa and you wait for our, you know, our showrunner to have for a couple to be glasses of wine. Strong. And you're like, so. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Next question. Yeah, so I've actually uh, heard about the, the Bermuda Triangle and how planes, like, were, like, missing in, like, yeah. like. Yeah. Like years, like back in like the nineteen like fifties, how planes flew, flew across the um, uh, triangle and then they just like just disappeared. I was I was wondering, does this have any like any like like uh, like does it does this like tie to like your plane missing and reappearing like in the next five years? You know more than I do, brother. <laughs> I have no idea. Did something just come out about the yeah. the oh, there always the, is something it, going the on over there. The Bermuda Triangle. Yeah. Wasn't there like a news article that just came out about Probably. it got solved or it disappeared? Or something? Oh, really? I didn't. See I that. don't know. I think I saw I something that, about that. There's always going something going on around there. Yeah. I mean, we have no here's idea. the thing: if we ended up having gone to the Bermuda Triangle, yeah. then we'll tell you all about what happens <laughs> yeah. while we're there. But yeah, there's uh, a bunch of theories, black holes. I mean, who knows? Yeah. Like, who knows? You know, that's what's so interesting about it. Is like it literally could go anywhere. What do you know about the Berm <laughs> can't say Bermuda? Why can't I the <laughs> Bermuda Triangle? Do you know anything about it? And then just disappear. Yeah. Yeah. Again, like I heard about that like like years ago and like read right. stories about it. So it's like I just thought that maybe you guys had maybe like ties to that. Maybe you guys will try like. I mean, I hope maybe, so. Like, that sounds like, fun. Be making a story That's about the theory. The that sounds really or, fun. Yeah. That's yeah. justifiable for sure. I really, my theory, just if you were interested, <laughs> yeah, sure. um, you tell. I'm, I'm going to lean into the spiritual side of all of this. Oh, thank you. And I, Michaela. Yeah, and yeah. I think that they're like guardian angels now. Oh. I feel like it's like a weird like post-life thing, okay. maybe. Okay. I don't know. I like it. But no, they're. But that would make sense because they're living their old lives. I don't know. I haven't like keep, <laughs> figured out all the details, but. <laughs> keep in mind, though, we don't know if these voices are good or bad. Yeah. We could be guardian angels for the wrong side. Yeah. What are you doing to me? See, now my whole theory. <laughs> I have no idea. Do you myth that? And one yeah. last question. 
Hi, hi guys. Uh, How are you? Oh, oh, to the front, sorry. Uh, hi guys. Uh, good luck tonight. Um, actually, I I watched Lost and I'm quite a fan, but um, the 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 ending disappointed. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, here. What what is the what are your parallelism with uh, with Lost and what are the differences that we 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 should expect? I wouldn't be the best person to uh, ask because I only saw a couple episodes of it. I, I mean, it was one of the best. Just the simple fact that we were in the same comparison, I guess, to, to a show like to that magnitude is, is a blessing. But we're definitely not. From what from what I hear, this show is very different. It does have the mysterious element of this plane that's gone missing that they've tried to do. They've done a, the story a, a couple times on television. But our story is, is really based on... On these people coming back and these lives, trying these 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 people trying to recreate and start over, you know, and and it's more about a relationship drama and the heart and everything uh, that goes with that than just, you know, just the the element of the plane, you know, coming back. I don't know. Maybe you can. Uh, no, yeah, I, that, uh, I haven't actually, yeah. and I and I need to, but um, I'm I just would love to know what you think moving forward, yeah. what the differences and the similarities are, and right. if you like our show, so. Yeah. I think the vibes are different and knowing that thing. that the creator already knows kind of where yeah, this I is going gives right. me a little more confidence because Lost, I don't think they ever knew <laughs> where that was going. And it right. kind of ended in like a I hear weird, that. I different hear way. Yeah. Disappointed the way it's so I'm excited for everybody to get to see Manifest and I'm excited to continue to watch this journey because you guys got me hooked. Yeah. If you guys want to check it out, make sure you do that tonight on NBC at 10, 9 Central. Give it up for Melissa and JR. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you.